Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, going in like we go. Move out the way, please don't be a hero. Bling, blow, ooh. She no skateboard P. Bling, blow, ooh. She no skateboard P. Hi everybody, Cabbage Patchy here today with another video. Uh, for today's video, I just wanted to come on here and remake another one of the videos I've made in the past and kind of um, update my growth on what I've learned about this whole experience. You know what I'm talking about because you've probably read the title already. Uh, Yoshi keeps meowing. <laughs> but yeah, uh, to say I'm excited is an understatement. I was, <laughs> I'm so excited to do this. Uh, what a crazy adventure um, for this little guy that I got right here. In my last video, I got a lot of comments from you guys giving me feedback on things that you know about taking care of jumping spiders and I wanted to tweak some of those. Uh, if you don't know, um, my last jumping spider, or the first one I ever had, actually ended up escaping from um, her enclosure. And uh, yeah, I, I couldn't find her. She didn't die in the enclosure because I searched around, but she must have got out. And I'll take the full responsibility for that. Uh, it's crazy because that video that I had actually had the most amount of views on any of my videos that I have on my channel, which was about like 3,000. Usually my videos only get like 100 views or something like that. And I got a lot of feedback, good and bad. Uh, you don't have to watch the video, but uh, if you do, you'll notice in the video I had a little kind of terrarium that was mostly meant for plants. This is the last enclosure I had my spider in. Um, it's pretty big. It had pretty much everything in. Like, it's not bad to have, I guess, but the thing they do need in it is air holes. They need <laughs> ventilation. Um, it may be a big space, but they still need that flow of air. If you're wondering how she got out, as you can see, the top is broken off. I actually had a heat lamp shining on top of it um, to stimulate her to, to start eating. Um, yeah, I wouldn't do this with a plastic container because that will melt it, but this is a glass one. But unfortunately, the heat tend to uh, break off the lid. And I'm guessing that's how she must have escaped that or she must have snuck under the bottom because I thought the weight would have held her from getting out. But uh, no, she didn't die. I checked the cage and she was not in there, so she must have got out. So yeah, my little jumping spider is in here right now. Um, I've actually had her for two days. I didn't have her in this jar though. Um, I kept her in her actual enclosure, which I'm going to decorate today. This is an actual jumping spider enclosure. I would highly recommend it. So yeah, here's my little spider. She is so fucking cute. Um, I haven't named her yet. I, I will pick a name by the end of this video. Um, she is a Fetifus regus. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Pink. So if you've ever seen Fetifus regus orange, which is usually kind of similar to what they are, except she is a little more pink. So for today, I actually want to go over everything I've learned to do the proper care of taking care of a jumping spider. Uh, at the beginning of the video, I'll show you everything about me making the enclosure, all that fun stuff. But after that, we're going to learn some educational things on how to take care of them which is, it's not too complicated, but they are little creatures. But at the same time, they're not really not that hard to take care of if you know what you're doing and you're willing to put in the time and uh, a routine to take care of them. So I'm going to go over that too. I forgot to mention, uh, I actually have two other spiders coming on the way. Um, you may think I'm a crazy spider lady, but these two spiders are my favorite spiders. Ever. I think they're the cutest spiders I've ever seen that a jumping spider and the other one being a velvet spider If you've never seen a velvet spider before I'd recommend going searching them up There's usually um, one type of species that people tend to get but the one I ordered in is actually yellow and black and um, They're not big like tarantulas But they're not small like jumping spiders either. So they're that little nice in between and yeah, the lady I ordered from is actually sending me two, I think. <laughs> They're taking quite a while to get here, but I put my trust in what she says, and she says they will arrive just fine, that they can hold off for quite a while. I think they're at some 
place in Canada right now. I've been contacting her all the time, trying to make sure that they're gonna arrive okay. And she keeps reassuring me, saying they will. They're actually coming all the way from Europe, which is crazy. But they were like the only breeder I could find that was uh, breeding them. So I thought that was pretty cool. And I love how she's shipping to me. So, so I'll probably be adding that into this video as well. Uh, <laughs> I might even be wearing the same clothes, so you might not be able to tell it's a different day. But when my my velvet spider comes in, it will be in this video too, which you already know. <laughs> if you want to know where I got my jumping spider or velvet spider from, I will leave a link in the description. It is especially hard right now for living in Canada, I find, for people to try find jumping spiders in particular. Uh, I'll mention it again, like I have in the comments. The best way to find jumping spiders, in my experience, is going on Facebook jumping spider uh, pages, and you will find a list of breeders that will be available to you in your area, and people all discuss things on how to take care of them properly, and it turns into a really, really nice community, so I'd really recommend that too. And the last thing before I start the video, I know this is a lot to cover in a video, I hope you stick around for it. <laughs> I am that crazy witch that is gonna do an exotic <laughs> uh, pet spell on my spiders. So, <laughs> I actually have my witchy book here, and I found a particular spell that is for exotic pets and welcoming into when they come into your home. So I have some Jasper here. Uh, I've actually had these out in the sun for quite some time. It's a part of the spell itself. I will do the whole ritual with you guys, but I'm gonna add these into the enclosure as well. These are gonna be for my velvet spiders because they're bigger and they have bigger enclosures. And this is gonna be for my little jumping spider. I'm gonna go over some facts after about jumping spiders and why you should love them. And when you see the big reveal of her at the end, it's gonna be the showstopper because she is so cute. So I'm gonna show you guys today all the materials I have that I might put in her enclosure. Um, I might not use all of them, but you can get pretty creative with it, which is awesome. First of all, I'm gonna have some Echo Earth for the bottom. I have some sticks here, and let me show you a quick video of how I sterilize them, because sterilizing sticks before you put them in any type of creature's enclosure is very important, so I'm gonna show you that right now. Okay, so the first thing you do when you bring your sticks from outside is I have my scrubby brush and I actually just jumped in the bath with my bathing suit on uh, and rinsed and scrubbed them down. So I start with one stick at a time and do a thorough scrub on each stick until I can get as much dirt in the remaining moss that will come off. I found the sticks without bark, you can have them with the bark, but I find it easier and safer without it or to just remove it in the first place. For the next step, I use antibacterial soap. This isn't the final step because we can't have soap residue on the wood after, but this will at least kill all the remaining bacteria that is missed as I scrub it off. Once you've done all that, you can then start boiling a pot of water and leave the sticks in the boiling water for about an hour. I didn't have a big enough pot, so I just flipped the sticks over at about 30 minutes each. After that, you can start the oven at 220 degrees and put them in for about an hour. This sucks up the remaining water and kills any last in bacteria. Just make sure to keep the oven at low temperatures to avoid a fire and stay in the kitchen and supervise them. Okay, so after that, they're done. I also have some rocks that I'm gonna be putting in the enclosure, so I'll show you how to clean those as well. So I found all these rocks out in my yard and I almost broke my back carrying them back anyway. Uh, but the only step to cleanse these guys is I scrub them down in the tub again with the running water. This being because I can't use antibacterial soap because A, I didn't want to boil them, and B, I couldn't put them in the oven or they might actually explode on me. <laughs> so basically just scrub them down as best as you possibly can. And they're a lot different than wood, so it only matters what's on the outside of rocks rather than wood, what's on the inside. I also have some everyday moss, which I'm gonna put in. And I'm gonna say this now, I'm not putting all these things in, so they kind of seem random, <laughs> no theme at all. Uh, but I got some rocks, uh, some more rocks and some crystals. This is from the last enclosure. Uh, some more crystals, kind of plastic ones. Rocks for the fun stuff. I also have pipe cleaner, <laughs> pipe cleaners uh, and ribbons. I have a shit ton of different color ribbons. I went to town and 
A uh, funny story, to get those in town, I actually, um, if you're living in Canada or in Ontario, part be particular right now, everything is locked down only for essential items, uh, which is pretty dumb. I'm not going to get into it. Uh, yeah, it took me a long time to get a light bulb. <laughs> to get a light bulb, I had to book an appointment to get into a store. I went into a Walmart to get a light bulb and it was closed off. Like like they're not essential or something. But anyways, uh, I went to Dollarama and everything is kind of has rope around stuff that can't be taken. So uh, being myself, I kind of like ripped the tags off and stuffed the ribbon and <laughs> pipe cleaners in my purse. <laughs> so yeah, if I ever get famous, like I guess I'm going to jail, right? Another thing I got in there that I stole is this random thing. I don't know what to do with it, but I just took it. And the last thing, I didn't steal this. And I also got this humid hydrometer. So it just kind of like measures humidity in the tank or in the little enclosure. This is something I would recommend uh, if you want to maintain your spider and make sure it lives as long as you want it to. Uh, wasn't that expensive, 10 bucks. So it's just for humidity. Okay, so finally I get to do stuff with my hands. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm just gonna adjust the camera. Can you still see me? I'll back it up. <laughs> the first thing I'm gonna add is my substrate. Mm. Yeah, if you guys didn't notice, I also did my makeup to match my little spider, so I tend to do that kind of stuff. This is a big bag, I'm mostly saving it for my velvet spiders which have a bigger enclosure, but you're not going to need that much, um, that's how much I'm adding. A lot of people don't even add any substrate to their spider enclosures because they're harder to maintain. That's up for debate, but I'll talk about that later. Okay, so here's a little time lapse of me setting up my jumper's enclosure. You will see that I make a lot of changes and I didn't use a lot of materials, but I was mostly going for a theme that matches together. But yeah, enjoy me and my mishaps. <laughs> Okay, so that took me a while to do. I did a lot of changes throughout it, but this is the finished product. I wrapped some like ribbon around it, the branches, I had sheet seashells, and some little stones in there and some crystals. I'll probably show you guys a video after. But yeah, before we add her in, I wanted to do a little witch ritual uh, with this jasper stone and say a few words before I put it in just to bless her home. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the before you do the, the spell itself and say it out loud, you're supposed to leave those stones outside for about two days. For me, I left them out for like two weeks or something just because I was constantly waiting for my spiders to show up. But yeah, two days works. That's how it's supposed to be with the spell. Just wanted to point that out. And it also says with the spell that you're supposed to leave the Jasper stones out on a plate of dirt. Okay, so the spell goes like this. Be blessed by the sun and moon and stars, by the earth and sky and sea. Bring health and safety, peace, harmony, and as long as light may be. Be blessed by the sun, moon, and stars, by earth and sky and sea. 
bring health and safety, peace, harmony, as long as life may be. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was my little blessed bee. Uh, but yeah, let's, um, what should we do next? Oh yes, and one more thing I almost forgot to add in is this little hydrometer, which is gonna tell me the uh, humidity that's going on in the tank, so. I'm gonna add her in there now. Give her a real home. There she goes. Where's your new home? <laughs> Hi. She's looking right at me. Hi. <laughs> yeah, let's carry her upstairs and put her where I'm gonna keep her for her proper home. You can see her safety line she puts everywhere. <laughs> But uh, my other spiders came in today, my velvet spiders, and <laughs> I was already so excited, so I already unpackaged them. Um, it's been about three weeks since I ordered them, and they've been on the road for that long or held up in some like facility, just been waiting to be transferred to me. But they made it, and they're alive, and when I got them home, I had to rip open the box and see if they were okay, and they seem to be okay. But yeah, here's the box. They are... So much smaller than I thought they would have been, to be honest. Um, they're just in this little enclosure. So there's two spiders in here right now. Uh, I just asked for one, but she sent me two, a male and a female, because she's she just thought, I guess, that I wanted to mate them for some reason, which I don't know if I will do that in the future. Let me get <laughs> let me know, you guys, if you want me to mate my velvet spiders, and maybe I can make a profit off them i don't know i'm not thinking that far ahead right now they are really teeny right now uh, a lot smaller than i thought they would have been because they get a lot bigger than a jumping spider size would uh, but they are very small they're just in these little test tubes so you can see one is marked male the other is marked female i gotta keep track of that make sure i know which one is which but uh yeah they're just kind of chilling in there they're making some movements She's kind of still right now, but I saw her legs moving, so I think she's doing okay. He's moving around more active, and they are so tiny. They're just like these little, I don't know if you can see it, little black specks, even smaller than jumping my jumping spider right now, but they will get bigger, uh, and they will change color as well. Usually when you search up velvet spiders online, you usually get like the black colored ones, but the lady I was talking to, she gave me such a wide variety for me to choose from. I was just so overwhelmed when she she told me about all the different ones I could choose from. And I finally chose one and it was, uh, I just call it the yellow face one because they have like a yellow face. Um, and these ones get a lot bigger, I think, than the usual um, velvet spiders that you'd see because when you're, she has a bunch of photos of them comparing next to each other really beautiful photos. I'll show you a photo right here of what my velvet spiders are going to look like because um, yeah, they're really cute. Like I'm usually not a spider person, but velvet spiders and jumping spiders, something about them, I just, my heart melts like, oh my God. When I saw my jumping spider, I wanted to cry. I was, oh, it was just so beautiful. <laughs> but yeah, that's what they're gonna look like and when they're older. And um, I think they get about like, she said 30 millimeters big, uh, which doesn't seem that big, but <laughs> I have a whole um, in terrarium, two terrariums ready. I only had one at first, but I bought another one. And they are way too big for these spiders. They would get completely lost in um, just the dirt. I'd never see them again. <laughs> it's like a needle in a haystack. Uh, so I think what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna set up those big enclosures just for to show what I'm gonna do with them and just leave them alone and they should be fine. And then in the meantime, I have these two little jars that I'm just gonna put either one, either one of them in. I'm gonna mark them with the female and male so I don't get them mixed up. 
and punch a bunch of holes in the top for ventilation, but make sure they don't go through, obviously. And I'm gonna decorate those and the actual terrariums today. So I'm excited for that, <laughs> really excited. <laughs> oh my god, I was so freaked out because oh my god, she was sitting in one spot for so long. Oh my god, I was so worried about you. She must be really scared right now, I'm sorry. But um, I had to check on her. She was not moving that much, so um, I just had to make sure her legs were moving. I'm just going to put her back in for a bit. Oh, it must have been so stressful, the journey. <laughs> But these guys, I've heard, she said they're very tough, the way um, she sent them off to me. She said they can withstand a lot of conditions. So, oh my God, thank God she's okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, another thing I want to mention, before you open up, like your, um, when you get a spider in the mail and you want to open up the thing to take them out, uh, it's always good to check to make sure they're not molting when you're taking them out. So inspect the whole test tube or whatever they're in, the little container. See if there's a web at the entrance, if they're in it, if they're at the entrance themselves, if they look like they're molting and stuck to the entrance. Cause what could happen is when you open it up, you could rip their molting skin off of them and it could really damage them. Um, so you gotta be really careful about that. But it, you just have to remember these guys are really fragile. And also they're very small. So when you take them out, usually you just wanna take them right from there and put them right into the enclosure. So don't handle them at all in your hands cause you don't wanna risk losing them on the first day. And you just wanna kind of build that trust and develop something like a system to make sure you will never lose them and that the right time. So don't get too excited, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But uh, that scared me. <laughs> okay, she's okay, my big girl. She's gonna get so big and big and strong. These uh. These spiders, uh, the girls, they tend to get a lot bigger, so I'm really happy about that. <laughs> I'm so excited! Okay, when I was driving into town to get these spiders, I'm always so pumped, like I'll just be like blasting my music and just having a great time. Do you guys see them? Do you guys see them in there? Do you see them, the little black things? Oh, you can. It's right, right there, right there. <laughs> There's her. He's at the very end. He's a lot tinier. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave you guys alone for a bit. So I'm so excited. We let's uh, start building their little um, mini cages because or terrariums because uh, I just want to get them out of there and into their new enclosure. They're probably starving. Um, the thing about velvet spiders though is they do not drink water, they do not need water in their enclosure. They get all their nutrients and water supply from eating their food supply. So they do not need any water, so I can't just give them water off the start even if they are thirsty. But I do have some mealy worms um, that are smaller, I guess I could try feed to them. I'm not sure if they would uh, take that. Um, I messaged the lady that I bought them from and I was asking her if I could do that but uh, I'm not really sure. There's not too much information out there on velvet spiders. I did research after research, and um, yeah, there's. it's kind of a rare breed, so it's hard to find that information that's just not coming from opinion and sometimes, but, um, um, but yeah, I'm gonna try that, and if not, I'll just make sure I go into plan B and maybe get some like fruit flies or something, but I wanna hear back from her, but I really hope they eat real soon. Um, but yeah, let's get right into these, <laughs> these little enclosures. And I gotta poke some holes on the top for ventilation as well. That's why I have my hammer <laughs> and a nail. And I'm just gonna do a bunch of, just a tiny bit of doo -doo 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 all over the top. But yeah, if you guys are wondering where I got my velvet spiders from, it is on a Facebook group called Velvet Spiders EU. 
So I guess Velvet Spiders Europe. And she has quite a broad variety of spiders that you can choose from, even if you're not even thinking about getting any. And if you are, you should do a lot of research. Don't just do it because you think something's cool, it looks cool, don't just make it into a trend. Um, but if you wanna go see and take a look and see what they look like, I'd recommend it because there's a lot of different types of velvet spiders that I don't think a lot of people really know about and all the varieties and colors that they come in, which is just so cool. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna keep this, these mini enclosures quite simple. I don't really have to add any decorations because once they get big enough, I can just take them out, I guess. Like I, like I did in my last jumping spiders terrarium, I have Echo uh, Earth. And I also have, where is it? Terraria. <laughs> I got high quality Shangna moss. So yeah, you know, this kind of moss. <laughs> I watched like a ton of velvet spider videos and they seem to be using this stuff in all their enclosures. So I thought that worked really well. And then I got a little confused because the lady that I was selling them, who was selling them to me said that the substrate can just be sand. But I was like, I don't know if I was willing to risk that because I read online that some spiders should not have sand in their enclosures because it's just not good for them or something. But um, so yeah, I just kind of went with what everyone else was doing and I want to see how that works. But if you have any tips for me to change anything, write them down in the comments. I'm willing to change that. To that's about that. That's about the amount of holes I think would do quite well. That's the other one. Uh, before I forget, let's label them female and male. <laughs> okay, where'd they go? Where'd they go? Oh, oh my god, okay. Whew, sometimes my brain just likes to play little tricks on me. <laughs> and like I said, or what I did in my last video, I have, in my last part of the video, I have two more Jasper stones, each for one of these guys, and these ones will be carried off through their old homes and brought into their new ones once they move big enough, when they grow up enough <laughs> to move, to leave the nest, I guess. Um, <laughs> first things first. We are gonna need some substrates. <laughs> Be too elaborate, flamboyant with any of this. Um, we have some little shells here. Hey, that little pink shell was nice in there, I think. I just gotta have to go kind of clean it off for a bit. Get any of that stuff. So, yeah, I cleaned the shell. I didn't use any soap or anything because that could really harm the spider. Um, but yeah, I just rinsed it off with water. I also have a bunch of rocks that I was gonna put in my enclosure. Um, but yeah, they're, they may be a little too big. We'll see. I kind of wanted to make like a little cave out of them or something, but I wanted to make sure it was safe. They don't really climb on anything, uh, so I don't really need to put any sticks in there. Mm, Just gonna add a little bit of moss in there. I don't wanna get them lost though. Lost in the moss. <laughs> There's your little dewdrop of a pumpkin. It's got a bunch of dewdrops on it. And a little shell for my girl. Okay, let's get them in here. This is taking a while. <laughs> oh, there you are. Oh, you just like to pay tricks on me. You were just trying to scare me. That's a sick joke. It's a sick sense of humor you have. Oh, you, you can see that little velvet face and oh, she's so beautiful. Okay, I'm just gonna put this in with you in case you have an emotional attachment to it. So there we go. I would say give me some names, some suggestions, but I'm usually quite picky with the names I give my animals and they're quite weird a lot of the time. So uh, I'll probably have a name picked out by the end of this video when I'm showing you the whole setup at the end. Where's my corner? Oh, there you go. see. Oh, I need to. Sorry. Sorry, guys. 
I didn't do that, I did that good. Okay, just like this, just like that. Like that, there we go. Hello, Chrome back there. Hmm. These spiders are really chill, man. Oh yeah, he's good. He's more than good, he's really good. tell though because the females are usually a lot bigger than the males and the females live longer as well. Let her be. Ta -da! <laughs> mm -hmm. Sitting down. I hope I say friends they are hope you don't mind. Oh and <laughs> I almost forgot oh my god I almost forgot I almost forgot Okay, these two Jasper stones have been waiting out in uh, outside for about three weeks now. It says two days, but yeah. <laughs> Doing the same thing I did with my other spell with my other jumping spider, which I haven't named her yet, but I will. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna do that little spell right now. I usually do this by doing a meditative state before I do this, but I'm already in a really good mood. So I'm just going to take a moment transfer my energy into the stone be blessed by sun moon and stars by earth and sky and sea bring health and safety peace harmony as long as your life may be just put it in gently be blessed by sun moon and stars by earth sky and sea Bring health and safety, peace, harmony, as long as your life may be. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Now let's do it again. <laughs> Bunch of weirdos out there thinking that I'm weird. Just kidding. Okay, there's the boy. <sighs> Feels good to do that. <laughs> So yeah, that's done with. Um, get rid of this pile of dirt. <laughs> We're blessed. <laughs> it's like the opposite when someone dunks your head in like, uh, as a baby in the holy water. This is just like the witch kind of thing like that. <laughs> now we can decorate the big cages and I'm so excited for that. Okay, I just gotta clean up a little bit just to get my space a little less cluttered so my mind isn't as cluttered as well. <laughs> so here's the tank. <laughs> Quite literally a tank itself. This thing's huge. But as you can see in it, uh, they only need the bottom. So just as long as they have enough space at the bottom, that's what I care about. All this just makes it look really big. But yeah, I'm giving my spider a little spidey mansion and this time I'm doing it the right way. So yeah, that should be cool. stop recording for a second there but uh, I added in a fake plant um, they can't take actual live plants in their enclosures because they don't need any water in their enclosure so the plant would die so I'm just adding a fake, a fake plant and um, a little garden pot for a cave and this little mushroom house and then I got also the moss in there and the substrate I'm gonna add this little crystal in there as well Uh, but yeah, here's the enclosure, the first one I did, uh, and then I also have my little jumping spiders upstairs, and then I'm gonna put the other one up there too as well, and then I'll show you them all together. So here's the big mumbo jumbo. This is actually the smallest one they could find at the store for me. Um, but yeah, it's just gonna be her own uh, spidey mansion, I guess you'd say. She's obviously not going in here right now, but I'm just gonna set it up, and I will have all this kind of theme I'm gonna go for. And yeah, let's see how it goes. Ooh. 
So I also have this crystal ball that I got when I was a kid because I just liked it. I was fascinated by what it looked like. Uh, it's just got a bunch of bubbles in it. And I think we're kind of gonna go for like a beachy water theme type thing, if that's even possible. But yeah, this will be like the main thing you look at when you put when you look in here. So uh, another thing I bought back then is a little lotus flower. I was gonna put it in my last spider den, but it didn't fit, so I'm gonna add that in too as well. We change things around as we go. I think I'm gonna add some dirt in on the inside of it too, just in case the spider decides to climb it, they will not get stuck on the sides. I still think it'll look pretty cool. I have this wooden plank. I don't know if I should put this in here actually. Might be saving that for, uh, I am in the process of buying some velvet worms. <laughs> Different from velvet spiders, velvet worms. Um, they're very rare creatures, uh, but I finally found a breeder that is willing to sell to me. And I just have to have the right finances right now to actually purchase some and all the equipment for it. So I'm thinking I might save this big cork bark for that. Okay, so I have an idea. Uh, I think I'm gonna make a cave, but it, since I don't want the cave to actually collapse in on my spider, I'm gonna use a plastic cup, a plastic cup for the inside and then just kind of wrap a bunch of rocks around it to make it look really cool. So let's see how that works out. I'm gonna use some of these aquarium rocks, so they should be safe. Interesting. <laughs> I don't know, let's okay. Okay, I think I'm done that one. It <laughs> looks really good, I think, in my opinion, but uh, everyone, not everyone has taste. <laughs> Just me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so here's where I'm keeping all the enclosures. Um, I have them all set up now, and I have them named now. <laughs> this is gonna be for the girl, and this is gonna be for the boy, I think. Uh, this is Pixel, that's her name. I just gave her a worm too as well. <laughs> I'll show you her um, eating that in the next bit, but this is her enclosure. I just misted it. Um, it has the humidity on the back right now. It says about like 54 or so, which should be good. 
I'm actually just about to go to the lake, so I was gonna grab all three of these guys and bring them with me and bring some mealyworms and stuff. I'll show you what I'm bringing with me. But yeah, and then I also named uh, the two velvet spiders too as well. So the girl spider, I decided to name her Corona. <laughs> it's actually, it's not Corona, like the coronavirus. It's a funny story because I was actually gonna name my cat that. Um, before I got her and before the coronavirus and it's actually the name of the person off a of soul eater Her name's Corona off there, and I just thought the name would suit her really well So I, I have to find her in a sec, but this is her enclosure set up right now um, I tried feeding her the other day and She kind of like attacked it a little bit or kind of like wiggled her little <laughs> Uh, legs at it. I don't know if it was defense or if she really wanted to attack it, but it was too big But um, I talked to the breeder that she sold me to or whatever and she said that they pretty much can eat anything um, But they are pretty big prey to feed them But I'm gonna try feed her again and if they don't eat anything because it's too big I'm gonna try maybe catch some flies and uh, put them in the fridge and hopefully that'll be an easy thing for them to eat and yeah and this is Akira um can't see him but this is his enclosure I named him Akira after one of my favorite um anime characters off of Devilman Crybaby <laughs> uh so yeah that's all their names Pixel uh Krona and Akira, and this is gonna be his enclosure. It just opens up like this. I have to really pull it. There we go. So they're not huge spiders. They're not like tarantulas, but they get about like 35 millimeters, I think. Um, these velvet spiders do get a little bit bigger than regular velvet spiders as well. So they'll probably be around like this big. So I'm thinking uh, they'll like that little cave and um, I think it'll, that one will be a good size for him. It's got a little crystal in there. Uh, that one's, that crystal's actually dyed by like some certain light or something, so it's not by dyes. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much the enclosure that I'm gonna use for him. He's got a little bit of a smaller enclosure because he's gonna be smaller himself. And I'm just gonna leave that for them until they're like full grown almost. And it should be fine because they don't need any moisture and it's just all set up and ready for them. And this is gonna be Krona's enclosure. Uh, I really love the outcome of it. I think it looks really cool. It's got some seashells, uh, a lotus flower, uh, that like um, glass ball and some like aquarium rocks. The cave is pretty cool too. It's got like the um, plastic cup in it, surrounded by rocks and moss. I tried to cover up all the holes. Um, the cave may be too big, so I'm scared she may get lost in it. Um, but if that happens, I'll kind of fill it up with something if she's um, full grown and she's still too small for that kind of size. I'll fill it up just so she doesn't get lost. And so just, just when I'm feeding her, so she'll come out and stuff like that, but yeah. And then this is Pixel's enclosure. <laughs> uh, it's pretty simple. She, there she is. She's so cute, she's so pretty. But yeah, she's a Fitifus Regus pink. Uh, there's the Fitifus Regus orange, which is pretty similar, except she's just more pink. Uh, it made her a little more expensive as well, but I just, I think she's so beautiful and she's exactly what I was looking for. Uh, for the other things I have set up around here, this was the old enclosure. I don't know what I'm gonna put in here yet. Um, as you can see, the top broke off. I'm gonna use some super glue and glue that back together, maybe use it one day. Uh, I wanna remake my worm farm video uh, and add some worms in here, like just earthworms in a bunch of dirt, and I'll keep them in here and I'll eventually put them up there once the big rainfall happens. Uh, I got my little paintbrush here to get the spiders out if I want to hold them or something. Um, my spray bottle to spray the cages or the enclosures. Um, when I go on my trip or to my camp, as I am um, in a few hours, I'm going to bring this little spritzer just for water to spritz the jumping spider enclosure. 
Uh, I'll show you up here where I keep my crickets too. I used to keep them in that little square enclosure, but it, it was too small. Uh, this is the cricket enclosure I have set up now. It's, uh, it's working really well actually, because um, before it was a lot smaller and I'd have to spray one area of the cage for their water and another for their food and it was causing lots of mold because the water was interacting with the food. So now there's a lot of space and I can keep this spot over here. This is where I spray in there for their water. And over here is where they keep their food. And there's about like six or seven crickets in there and about five mealworms. So uh, yeah, they seem to be like getting a lot. They're really chirping like a lot. I don't know if that means they're happy, but uh, I just want to give them the best home they can possibly have. Uh, they're living creatures to me, so they still, uh, they matter to me a lot. Um, the type of food I give them, I just give them organic feed for crickets. Well, that's what it says, uh, but it's also for mealworms as well. And they seem to like that. Um, whenever I do feed them to my spiders, I just use my tweezers and I use this little container right here and I pick them up how many I need. I put them in here, I transfer them down there and I bring my tweezers and then I feed them to my spiders. Um, and yeah, I use this little spray bottle right here for watering their cage as well. Uh, the cleaning is pretty easy. I just do it about once a week. Um, if there's any mold, I'll clean that out. Usually it's just a lot of droppings. This is kind of fresh, but you can see a lot of droppings or just a few droppings on the ground. And I basically just take it downstairs, um, take out the paper towel, wipe it down with just water, um, get in fresh food, fresh uh, paper towel, and then give them fresh water as well. And then sometimes I change out the little paper towel rolls and I always save those after I'm done using them as well. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm gonna bring some Maybe some small crickets, if I can find any, or some small mealworms. I already fed my jumping spider, but I can bring about like two of those to the lake. And yeah, so maybe, I think I'm gonna try feeding my um, velvet spiders again and see if they'll eat something. So we're gonna try that right now. Right there, see her. Oh, it's on her right now. Oh, she just moved. She doesn't seem to be hungry. She's just a little more shy than the other male spiders, so I'm just gonna leave her alone now. <laughs> but she is pretty cute looking. You can kind of see her face. <laughs> all velvety and she's gonna get much bigger and she's gonna turn yellow black and yellow you can see now that I just found Akira uh, he's a lot smaller <laughs> oh my god he's so beautiful he's gonna turn out pretty much just like the female I think oh there he's going except he'll just be a bit smaller so he'll be black and yellow <laughs> I didn't expect you to be this tiny. But yeah, since he's so small, I'm thinking I might have to kill one of the prey for him, like a mealyworm, I'm thinking. Uh, he looks like he's hungry because he's really moving around and exploring, so I'll try feeding him that. I'm not really interested. You haven't eaten in a long time, aren't you hungry? Sorry, bud, I didn't mean to scare you. Okay, I'll take the worm out of there. Then I'll contact the breeder and I'll see what she has to say. But oh my goodness, look at him. He's beautiful. See him do a little walk, there he goes. Oh, wow. I love their chunky little faces. I just cleaned out her little enclosure and took out the mealworm. That was her second meal already and she's just chilling right here and she's already, look at her bottom. <laughs> She's got back, man. You can see that pinkish in her. She's really pretty. She's kind of like a tanny pink, but also like orange. Okay, let's try to take her out. I'll use maybe this paintbrush. Oh my god! 
<laughs> Hello there. Come here. I'm not gonna hurt you. Come here. I'm sorry. I'm shaking a little. But you can come. Oh my goodness. Hello. <gasps> she jumped. <laughs> she scared me though when she jumped. But she jumped. <laughs> jumped in my hand. I just shake a little bit, but I swear I'm harmless. There we go now. Oh, <laughs> she jumped. Okay, at least I know where she is on the ground, but I have no animals around. I'm not really sure what she's doing right now. She's kind of sticking her butt up in the air. Oh my, look at her fur. It's all like <laughs> pink. Yes, you are full of it, aren't you? So beautiful. Oh, there she goes. I'm gonna set you right back in here. That was fun, wasn't it? That was some enrichment. <laughs> she is just full of life right now. <laughs> She's never been this active. She's usually pretty chill, but oh my god. <laughs> I love her so much. Look at her. Hello, sweetheart. Hello there. <laughs> I could just stare at her all day. She's really one of a kind. Why don't you go back in there? Back in your little enclosure there. You want to come out for more fun, don't you? It's funny because she walks towards the light as well. Usually you would think she would go away from it, but... Yes. She is pretty, and she's going to get bigger too. She's not a full adult yet. You can see on her bum it looks like a little face, kind of like me. <laughs> I don't know what kind of face that would be, but it's so cute.
so this is the part of the educational part of the video. Um, this is mostly going to be everything I know and have learned on jumping spiders and how to take care for them and my experience of having one um, and all the stuff I had to learn afterwards that are very crucial to know if you really want to strive to have a long life for your spider yourself. Um, so I learned all that stuff in Jumping Spiders Pet Owner Guide. It's pretty much got everything you would need to know in here. It's just a whole book dedicated to just jumping spiders. So uh, the people obviously put in a lot of the research to actually getting the facts straight. Um, as for velvet spiders, those ones are a little harder to find information on. Uh, like I said, I'm willing to be open to information if anyone out there has another velvet spider. But from what I've heard from the breeder that I bought from, she said that they're actually not that hard to take care of since just cause you're always having to worry about the mold. Um, and maybe even some of the things that are in the book kind of like go towards other spiders too, like other, like a velvet spider, for instance. It's just kind of like common, like common knowledge, you could say, to know these things. It's good to know if you have a spider yourself because these guys are just so small and it kind of goes in a uh, broad way towards all spiders. Yeah, I actually moved to my back room because I'm still living at home, so I didn't want my parents to uh, come home and there'd be talking in the background, maybe some just silly banter back and forth. <laughs> and it just would um, it would have kind of put me off my, uh, my thought. <laughs> But yeah, without further ado, let's just get right into some of the facts on jumping spiders, starting from the very beginning when you get one till the very end to when you sadly have to let them go. <laughs> okay, so I mentioned this before, but say you did order a spider online and it just came in the mail and your terrarium's ready for it and you just wanna kind of take it out of the container because you're excited and you wanna see it or pick it up or whatever, always do a first inspection. It would be such a tra traumatic <laughs> event to find that when you first get your spider, you open it up and you rip its molting or its skin off and you end up injuring your spider. So um, these spiders, when they're on their journeys, they could also be going through their molt stage. So it's very important to inspect the test tube they're in or the container and just make sure they're not at the like the lip of the lid or whatever if they did happen to make a web around the cap um do not open it i would inspect it some more try to get some more information on where your spider is if you think it's in the web i would suggest that you leave it alone for a while it is probably in molting and let it go through its molting stage um, and throughout that process, you will not be able to reach it, but um, you can also maybe, if there's a few ventilation holes in there that you could make that's not close to the spider, you could spray some water in for them, for them, for them to get some water themselves. Um, can't really do anything about the food, they'll be okay because they're just molting right now but uh, it's always good to be very careful with that. And on the second scenario, if your spider wasn't molting, if it's fine, if it's in the container and it's moving around and you wanna take it out, uh, just make sure you're prepared. Um, I would say, I would say just get it from one, from the tube or the container that it's in, into the new enclosure. Do not handle it for a long time. Do not try to play with it. It's very confused at first, even though these spiders come from like breeders and all that, they're used to people most of the times. They are, have been on a long journey. They don't know who you are. They don't know what you're gonna do. And in my last video, my spider actually ended up running away from me, but I, thank God I caught her on time. So it's always, it would just be a big, um, a tragedy to find that your spider just ran off and you're never able to find it again because they're pretty small so just try to carefully have like a plan set to get it from one destination to the other and then just let it make itself at home for a bit you don't have to feed it right away uh, but some water would be good here are some facts i learned on jumping spiders uh jumping spiders live for two to three years 
so that might be surprising to some and unsurprising to others since they're so small but they really are just such great creatures that people just wish they could have around for a really long time um, but they can die earlier than that depending on um, how old they were when you got them it could just be so many things so it, it's not always uh, your fault if your spider dies unexpectedly uh, a lot of the time people will get spiders out in the wild and these spiders are old of age and they don't know that already and then like a few weeks later it passes on so just keep that in mind and for a creature that has a brain that's no bigger than a poppy seed uh, it may surprise some that they are the smartest spider in the world <laughs> it never really surprised me they don't tend to just stay in one place all day they will look at you when you call them they will look at you but the reason they're actually so intelligent is they have to develop hunting strategies to track down their prey so they have to think about the things they will encounter and they also have to kind of memorize their surroundings and know how to get back home which sounds really crazy but these guys they are crazy they're crazy amazing to me just because they're like one of the only spiders that actually goes and out, out into the world and tries to find their prey rather than just building a web and making it come to them, which I think is really cool too. I've even heard people say, like in this book, she even mentioned like some people have been able to train their jumping spiders to do tricks. Uh, it's not like you're gonna get it to roll over, but I've heard of high fives and teaching it with a certain cue for it to jump on you. So I've never actually, I'd have to look that up, but it's, it's just so unbelievable to me. <laughs> you let me know in the comments if you want me to teach um, my little jumping spider some tricks in one of my videos, and maybe I'll try to do it if it gets enough uh, upvotes or something. <laughs> Another thing I forgot to mention is a lot of people wonder like, okay, so jumping spiders jump because they have muscles or, um, they use their front legs a lot of the time people think but it's actually their back legs they're using to jump and What they do is they send all their blood to the back of their legs and it just kind of like shoots them off the ground I don't know the exact like scientific <laughs> behind it, but like they that's how they tend to jump far distances So next time you see your spider jumping just know that they're concentrating all that blood to go straight into their legs Okay, so I don't know if I wrote this down completely right feel free to like uh, Correct me, but the male jumping spiders tend to have um, the green and blue fangs and That's usually how you tell them apart um, when they're adults um, because then that's usually the distinct quality. There's another way you can look at their abdomen and there's usually a little dot at the bottom of them, but most of the time people just say when they buy them, that's usually how they look when they're full adults. And the females tend to be a lot more colorful as of the males being a lot smaller and usually more black and white and duller colors. Will jumping spiders bite you? No, they will not bite you. Uh, they have fangs, which can make them intimidating, but no, um, the only time a jumping spider might be willing to bite you is uh, when a, a female uh, produces eggs, like fertilized or non-fertilized. She may be trying to protect her babies. So if she ever does that, fertilized, not fertilized, just try to stay away from her, give her her space. She's just doing her mother motherly job. And if a spider is going to bite you, they will warn you before they do. Um, they will do a defense stance that most spiders do. It's usually when they uh, lift up both their front legs and they just kind of go like this and they kind of show their claws. And once they do that, just leave them alone. Even if um, you're trying to feed them, just let them be. Another thing that's really cool about jumping spiders is they're kind of like safety uh, precautionists. <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but like they have always like a bungee line or like a, a safe line. Say if they, say if you were like climbing a mountain, you'd always have a line in case you fall. It's the same thing with spiders. Everywhere they walk, out their bum, their abdomen. <laughs> Uh, a stream of silk or web comes from their behind everywhere they go just in case they fall and then that that string itself will catch them. Okay, getting into breeders. I uh, just want to keep in mind that sometimes when you buy a female jumping spider from a breeder, 
uh, that is an adult, there could be a chance that she could be pregnant with her babies. Um, I'll get more into that, of what you would do if that happened. I just want to talk about some of the breeders and if it's a good breeder or where to find them online. Okay, a little bit of technical difficulties there throughout this whole situation. Um, I just switched from my camera to my, my phone to my camera because my phone ran out of space. And then before, my iPad was broken so I couldn't read the notes off there, so I had to use my dad's phone. Yeah, I just noticed how much different the lighting looks on my camera compared to my phone. It looks really weird, but I don't know, Let's see if I like it. And it's also funny because yesterday I was recording, or no, it was two days ago I was recording, and then I stopped, so now I came back to now, so it's just all over the place. But anyways, <laughs> let's get back into it. When looking into breeders, it's always good to ask lots of questions. Um, one of the main things you look for, or the question to ask is, do you arrive alive with your creatures? So do they send their creatures like guaranteed they're gonna be alive when you get them? Um, this could be due to the enclosures they have, uh, how many days it takes um, for it to get there, or like how the weather is. Sometimes they will ship at certain times of the year that shouldn't be, be good, or sometimes it should be good times of the year that'll make it better for them to arrive alive. Like with my spider, usually it's like two to, day, two to three days for um, shipping from one place to the other. Uh, sometimes it's even overnight, but with me, I'm from Canada and these were coming from across the country. So, um, but they still reassured me the whole time saying they're quite tough and they can stick it out. But it's always good just to make sure these people know what they're talking about, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. And if you can't find people online, it can be very hard to search online and find websites sometimes, especially for me in Canada. There's not many, many options right now even in the summer, um, but I find where I did most of my findings of these spiders is on Facebook groups. Um, just joining these Facebook groups where people are all passionate about jumping spiders or whatever type of spider you're interested in, and usually they have a listed um, down in their description or something that uh, they have all the breeders that they recommend that they know are guaranteed. That doesn't to say that they will they will ship to you, but you can check each and every one of those and check out their sites and you will probably eventually find someone. Another way to get a jumping spider, it is humane to go out and get your own jumping spider. There is no way they will ever become an extinct. If you wanna find them, they are usually outside basking on warm surfaces. You just have to look under little nooks and crannies, usually on metal or just on pretty much everything you could think of. But a lot of the times it's man-made things sometimes even. Or it would be easier that way than looking in all the trees because there's so many trees out there. But um, if you even walk downtown, you can probably find them. Uh, there's no guarantee you will know exactly what the sex is or if it is elderly or if the spider is pregnant, so just keep that in mind. Uh, you could be bringing in a bunch of babies or you could be bringing in an old spider that could die in a few days or weeks time, so it's okay to get a smaller one as well too, even <laughs> Even if the the bigger ones look cooler, um, they may be older. So it depends on how long you want to watch them live their lives for. Also keep in mind when you're catching these guys, they are a little more feral out there. <laughs> they're not used to human hands and they're a little more jumpy, so it'll take a while for them to bond with you overall and uh, it'll be harder to catch them, so just be careful. Even if you do get bit, just be careful not to hurt the spider itself. Also, when you bring it home, these spiders, uh, they could be carrying mites with them. There is a possibility of that. So if you have any other kind of like exotic animals nearby, it's always good to quarantine your spider in a separate enclosure away from all the other ones. Uh, jumping spiders cannot be put in the same cages together. Um, no, unless you're mating them, but even then they sometimes can kill each other. But just make sure to keep that spider away for a few weeks. Um, and also, uh, another big possibility, another gamble of the dice of going out and getting a spider, a jumping spider, another crazy fact, uh, female jumping spiders can actually hold male sperm in them for about a year. 
So even if she's not pregnant um, at the time that you get her and you've had her for quite some time, she may still give birth to babies. Um, <laughs> so yeah, any female spider, even if you don't know it's male or female, she could become pregnant at due time. Female spiders also sometimes lay unfertilized eggs and they will still try to protect them. And I will get into that, but um, for now, let's move on to something else. For the care of the spider, uh, when you were misting the spider's cage, this jumping spider's cage, uh, just do it once every day, mist the sides of the, the cage, and never ever spray at the spider directly. You could kill the spider, they can die in a droplet, being that they breathe, I think, like right between their legs, so they could die just by spraying them. So just be very careful of that. Yeah, so the thing that's between their legs, it's actually called their book lungs and it's located on their abdomen. So if they even step into a too big drop of water, they could drown or suffocate. Crazy enough of that. Also, when you use something to mist the enclosure, make sure it's like a brand new um, bottle. Don't ever use anything that's been used with chemicals. You will kill your spider. Uh, just go buy a brand new bottle and also it's nice to have one that has like a light mist with it Something that's not just gonna uh, stream out a bunch of big droplets if you know what I mean This helps the spider drink and it also helps them from drying out and it is best to spray the side of the enclosure away from their nest. Uh, it's hard to say completely how much you should mist your enclosure It really depends on the time of the year where you live in the world uh, I actually have a little um, humidified thermometer, oh, I can't remember what it was called, uh, but it tells me like what levels it's at in the tank, you can just stick it right onto the side, and it generally is usually supposed to be around like 50 to 60, and if they are in molting, it's got to be slightly higher to help them molt a little better. So a too and dry, so a too dry environment may dry the spider out and a too wet environment can cause more mold or it could drown the spider. If you were going to use a light on your enclosure, uh, I would recommend an LED light. Uh, I actually had a heat light for my last enclosure. If you watched my last video, uh, I did this because my spider, she was not eating. It was taking a really long time after I got her, she wasn't eating. Um, so I tried to get a heat lamp to stimulate her eating and she actually really loved the heat lamp surprisingly or not She would always be right where the heat lamp is just up against it It's really strange like how these things happen like everyone's always giving their opinions on how what you should be doing with your jumping spiders But some of them are just like completely unique and what they want and stuff like um, my little jumping spider, oh, I haven't named her yet. Well, I probably did in the last one, the uh, <laughs> last video I just showed, but um, but yeah, my little spider upstairs, I already fed her on the second day that I got her and she ate right away. So she's had no trouble eating and she seems quite happy. She's roaming around a lot, hasn't made a nest yet, but um, yeah, it just all depends. So I might add a light in with her enclosure and if I do that, I would probably hoist something at the back and make it so the light is shining at the top. So if they wanna to go to the top to heat up, they can do that. If they wanna retreat down, they can go down and cool down. What I love about my new enclosure for the jumping spiders is it's actually meant for jumping spiders. Uh, it comes with the mesh so that the airflow can come back and forth through it. Um, <laughs> and it has that height too because they do like to climb and they tend to like to hang out at the top of their enclosure as well. Uh, and also when I take it off, it doesn't ruin the nest itself. The only problem I have with it though is um, my cat. If you have a cat, uh, my cat when she first saw it, she was very curious and she was staring at it a lot. So I was very scared she was gonna knock it over and try to get the spider out. Um, so I actually taped it up the first uh, few nights I had her just so she couldn't do anything to him or her. So uh, yeah, I did that. But so far she hasn't been bothering my spider. But if she does, I'm gonna have to think of another way to kind of keep it stuck to the ground and also kind of make it so it's the top doesn't come off because I really don't. That would just break my heart if my cat ate my spider. <laughs> uh, in the book I read, on jumping spiders, 
they actually mentioned at one point that an adult needs an 8 by 8 by 12 inch enclosure. I measured mine, it was kind of in that criteria, it just needed to be a little bit wider, kind of like a, that square terrarium I was working on before. It almost did those exact measurements, like this way and then almost this way. It's just not as much of a square, more of a rectangle, if you know what I mean. But uh, yeah, I've never actually read that before. I always thought that um, she had more than enough room in her enclosure. So please let me now know down below what you think about that and how much space you think jumping spiders are supposed to have because the enclosures I got were actually meant to be for jumping spiders. So um, maybe I'll upgrade it in the future, but I don't know. I'm just, I'm just curious to what you guys have to say. It's really nice too, or it's just, it makes me feel good. Uh, I haven't done it yet. I want to bring my little jumping spider uh, outside sometimes, maybe not on hot days, or I can just keep her under the, the deck itself, just so they can feel like the breeze coming through, you know, like, um, <laughs> it's not like we will ever know in the history of humanity, do jumping spiders like the breeze in their enclosure? There's no way of really knowing that. But still, it's still just um, a nice thing to do, I think. It can't hurt anything. It's bringing them out more into their natural habitat, so you could try that sometime. The temperature that is most needed for jumping spiders is between 23 and 28 degrees. Um, a lot of beginners, I would say, start with a thermometer. Uh, unless you know the temperatures in your house at all times, if they're gonna stay in between those ranges. Um, sometimes, like I said, you'll need like a, a LED light just to give it that extra warmth. It depends on the spider sometimes. Um, but just kind of see where they go in their cage. If they're in there trying to stay warm, um, if they're hiding, if they're eating, you know, you'll see those types of things. It's also good to have a little shaded spot in your enclosure for your spider. Uh, if they get direct sunlight, that's not always good. So it's good to have a spot in your enclosure for your spider for them to just go off and kind of go chill in the shade whenever they want to. And instead of just being like, um, because not every day is the same. Sometimes the sun shines more than others and sometimes it's hotter out. So maybe some days they want to go hide away or something like that. I don't really have that in her cage, but um, she's kind of in an area where the sun doesn't really hit that much. So she's just kind of getting that, just um, the light coming through, not like direct sunlight right on her enclosure. So I think she's doing okay right now. When you feed your jumping spider, in my preference, I like to feed them hand feeding. Not really, kind of with tweezers. Uh, I don't have the tweezers with me, but they're, they're special tweezers. They're especially for mealyworms, crickets and stuff, it's just so you can grab them and kind of just put them right in the right in its face, kind of just near your uh, jumping spider and it kind of stimulates them to attack and it kind of shows if, if they are hungry in that moment or not. Um, other people kind of leave their uh, prey in the enclosure with them. You can do that. Uh, it can be dangerous, especially if they are bigger than your actual spider. Uh, they can bite your spider. They can hurt your spider, uh, especially crickets do. Um, and also with mealyworms, mealyworms like to dig under the ground, so you might not be able to find them. I'm gonna talk more about this after. You can feed your spider freshly killed prey. Uh, I don't really like doing this. I don't really like killing creatures, but I guess I still am. <laughs> but you, what they recommend doing is um, kind of crushing the head a little bit, and that still triggers some them to do some body movements and then you can kind of shake it and then they will eat it then. Other than that, they will not eat dead creatures itself. If your jumping spider is a baby jumping spider, I'd recommend giving it fruit flies. And once they hit that older age and they're too weak to eat, uh, sometimes going back to the baby food <laughs> or the fruit flies for your jumping spider is easiest for them to eat themselves. Jumping spiders typically go through stages of instars. So they go from one instar to the next and they have about seven to about 20 molts throughout their life. As for a juvenile, that is a hobby term. Slings are generally a three to four molt 
and anything up to a seven is generally considered juvenile. After the seventh molt, that is when it will be considered a sub-adult and for the males, they will be fully mature. And the female would be considered fully mature at the next molt. I'm going to go through some of the prey that you can feed your jumping spiders. Some of these are more available to others than other people, so you're just gonna have to do with what you have. One of the safest things you could feed them are probably flies. Uh, an easy way to feed them flies is actually putting the flies in a container in the fridge. This dulls their senses, so they're less likely to fly around and they become kind of lazy. So when it comes to feeding them to your spider, um, they will not bite your spider. The flies will never bite your spider, so there's that. They also make very easy prey for your spider as well. Uh, as for putting them in the fridge, another reason to do this is this keeps the flies from mating and creating maggots. So it kind of sounds gross to put them in your fridge. Uh, I know there are other ways, like you don't have to, but if you want to keep the maggots, there are ways you can feed the maggots to your jumping spider. Mealworms are one of the things that I feed my spiders. Um, they don't move around as much, so they may seem a little uninterested in eating them at first, but if you grab them with the tweezers themselves, and they start to wiggle around kind of, so it kind of stimulates them to attack them. Uh, one thing I would warn though is never leave mealworms in the cage with your spider though because they will burrow beneath the dirt and then you will not be able to find them. And then what happens is they molt themselves and then they turn into beetles which are very detrimental to your spider and could harm it. So never leave mealworms or mealworms, I don't know how to say it, in your uh, in <laughs> enclosure. Uh, another thing I've heard of is dubia roaches. Usually these guys tend to be a little too big for um, the spiders in my liking, but uh, I mean if you find some your size, I just look out for, they like to burrow beneath the dirt so you will not be able to find them um, unless you get them out. And they tend to like to sneak up on your spider and they could uh, potentially endanger it while it is sleeping or if it is in a molt it could really hurt it. Uh, yeah, so I wouldn't really use those for a, a first timer. Another one uh, that you don't really feed to them on the daily, it's kind of more of a treat for them. They're really high in fat, very low in calories. They have almost no um, <laughs> like nutrition, no benefits to them or any way, but they are a nice treat for them at some times if you want to give them some wax worms. Another thing I've heard that you can feed your spiders is moths. Personally, I really love moths. I never feed my spider moths just because I love them so much. They're like butterflies to me. Um, yeah, but they're they're really easy to feed them because there's no harm. They'll, there'll be no um, way that they can hurt your spider in any way, uh, except if you brought them from the outside because they could have like pesticides on them or something, but that's just about it. I meant parasites, parasites. And of course, crickets. Uh, that's usually the most common thing people use. Most people know about these types of things. But yeah, basically, like I said before, crickets, they can bite. Um, it's good not to get one that's too much bigger than the spider itself, because uh, it could overpower it. Um, it's also good to use tweezers when you're giving your uh, spider like its meal for the first few times and seeing if it's okay and it can catch its prey on its own, make sure it's uh, confident with that, I guess you could say. Or you could crush its head. Um, I don't like doing that. I don't like the crunching noise that much. It's kind of gross. So there's a high variety of things you can feed your spiders. Uh, you can look online and you'll see a ton of opinions on people and what they're doing. Um, I'd say it depends a lot on the size too. Just be careful of that. Um, you can't just feed them everything, obviously. Uh, as long as you're not giving them anything that could potentially harm them or become their prey. Um, but it's good to give them a, like a well-balanced diet and switch it up sometimes. Uh, like I give mine sometimes mealworms and crickets. That's all I really have in my town that I can give them. But. Um, Every spider is a little different. Some prefer different foods from others, so they all have their little tastes, I guess, and things. A rule of thumb that you can follow uh, to know what size to feed to your spiders is generally never feed them something that is one and a half size 
bigger than them. And generally never give them too little of things or that could lead to health issues and not getting enough nutrients. Uh, just generally make sure every time they finish their food, they'll leave a carcass on the ground. They don't typically eat the whole thing, they just suck the juice out of it. Um, yeah, so just take it out. Uh, some people may freak out that their abdominal is kind of getting too big, but they know when to stop eating, so don't freak out. I was freaked out too when my spider was doing that. But it could also mean uh, that she is gonna give birth, so you never really know. <laughs> Some spiders may even start to run away from their prey if they're used to being hand-fed from breeders. Uh, they're smart like that. They adapt to their surroundings, so you may even have to kill the prey for them to eat it. It's quite strange. So generally you're supposed to offer your jumping spider food every three days. Uh, just do it every three days, even if they do not take it, um, just keep offering it every three days. Don't leave it in the cage with them for too long. But for example, a third or fourth instar can take about three to four fruit flies per day. You can drop a live prey in the morning in their enclosure. I prefer to use tweezers, but it's also good to do this because it keeps their minds healthy and it also kind of keeps their bodies agile and active. It really depends on a lot of things if a spider eats more or not. Uh, female spiders tend to eat more if they are pregnant <laughs> at the same time. Others are growing and need more, and sometimes others are molting or laying on eggs and need less. But generally, sometimes an adult um, can go a month without eating. Just keep an eye on them on the first few times you do this, just to make sure they get the hang of it, and always remove the carcass after because it will stink. Here's a little bit on what to do if your female spider lays some eggs and she's protecting them. If a female spider does lay eggs and you're trying to offer her food, she will generally be guarding her nest for about one to two weeks. It is okay if at this time when you're trying to offer her food and she doesn't take it, generally she will guard them, like I said, for one to two weeks and then she will abandon them. Um, but in the time being, do not touch the eggs, do not try to destroy them or move them or anything like that. That could have a lot of detrimental impact on the mother and cause health issues, so don't touch it. Uh, female spiders have actually been known to die guarding their eggs, so if you're worried, uh, continue misting and offering her food, but if it goes past that point, I would say put a fly in the freezer and put it at the offering of her cave, of her nest, and see if she takes it. As a last resort, I would recommend using a paintbrush and trying to coax her out by the back of the nest itself to make her come out. Hey yo! Different species and genus have different characteristics on how long the female spider will live after laying some eggs. This depends on how well the husband tree is, but generally um, most female jumping spiders will lay infantile eggs throughout their lives. Um, but females tend to live longer. Once your female has abandoned the eggs, you will have to destroy it. Uh, she has no interest in them anyways. She knows that they're not going to hatch at that point. So it is good to take them out because they can cause bacteria and mold to grow. So uh, it's kind of a strange uh, question, but it needs to be answered is what do you do if you're going away? Uh, well, it's not like everyone is gonna be able to know how to properly care for um, something that small, <laughs> something that exotic. Uh, for me though, um, I am quite lucky because my camp is about a 10 a minute drive away from my house and my little jumping spider is in a kind of like a on the go <laughs> kind of crate or um, enclosure. So I can just kind of bring her with me to my camp and then bring her water and she should be fine. I'm usually only there on the weekends for three days and I just have to miss her enclosure and she should be fine. And to do with my velvet spiders, those guys are really tough and they can probably wait three days and I'll come back and feed them. But for other people, if you're wondering and you're going away on vacation and you have no one around that you can trust to take care of your precious little babies, <laughs> Uh, here's what I read in this book about it. I've heard that if you've gone for a few longer days, you can drop a few pupa and spikes in the enclosure and they will hatch um, kind of randomly for like the spider to kind of munch on. Uh, I don't actually know what they look like, but um, they seem to, t they tend to work, but just don't put too many in there because these spiders 
they um, are able to go about a week without eating so they should be fine just don't put too many in and stress them out in there with them another thing that you will need is a dripper uh, this will be a type of device you make at home that slowly drips water into the enclosure so you will need like a plastic or paper cup and to poke a hole through the bottom but basically you would just have to put it on the top of the ventilation holes um, you'd have to be very careful with this because like I said before it's so easy to drown a spider but I would say test it out for a while see if it's working um, see if it's the right amount or you could buy your own automatic mister sprayer these are usually sold for reptiles so make sure you're just being careful when you buy that and if you do, make sure that it's sprayed away from where your spider usually is and away from the nest. I know this sounds like a lot, uh, but you don't want to come back home to a dead spider, but you can't really leave it out in direct sunlight, so um, not like near a window or anything where it could cook it, so you might need to buy a timer um, that's with a light, so you'd put it into a secure area where no light will be shining directly on it and this will give it the kind of illusion that it is day or night time and it'll produce it or it'll um, stimulate it to actually go hunt on its own. And yeah, you should be setting that all up a week's prior to see if it all works. Don't just rush around and do it last minute. So <laughs> for molting, your spider will generally do it every three to four weeks and probably about five to six times throughout its lifetime until it's a full adult. Typically, they usually do this in their nest, uh, but there has been cases of them doing it out in the open, so don't freak out. Um, <laughs> it kind of looks like they're twitching out and it may look like they're dying, so don't panic. Always keep that in the back of your mind if you think your spider's dying. It could just be molting out in the open. Try not to help it too much, it's doing its thing. Um, and yeah, it's probably just <laughs> shedding its old skin or something like that. A sign that they're about to molt is generally that they will not be eating, but their abdomen will stay the same size and will not shrink. Uh, and they may be hiding up in their nest for about two weeks time. If they poke their head out, you can offer them food, but if they don't accept it, then just don't worry about it and let them be. If at the beginning of getting your spider, they build their nest at the enclosure uh, lid. It is okay to tear it down, but just make sure that when you're tearing it down that first of all, they are not in there and that they are not molting. Um, if they're molting in there, let them molt first and come out and then you can tear it down. Generally, they will just find another spot to build their nest again. But just don't get too picky with it, uh, just let them do their thing. Just as long as they're not at the entrance of where you're trying to open the cage. Uh, that is generally why there is specified uh, jumping spider cages is because the top lid has a big thickness to the top so they would be at the top but when you lift it up it would not damage them at all. It's also good to remember that after they molt their skin is very soft, uh, they are tender. Try not to pick them up, just leave them for a day or two. Uh, and with feeding, it can be a little more dangerous to feed them at that time. So it would be a better idea to feed them something that's less likely to hurt them or if you were to crush the head um, and kind of uh, shake the prey around a little bit or sometimes they twitch on their own and that should get your spider to eat anyways. That being said, molting time is different for every instar stage of life. In early instar, they may molt for uh, one to three days. As for an older spider, they may not molt for three months, but then stay in their molt for two to three weeks. But every spider is completely different. If your spider isn't molting enough at a younger age, it may be time to switch it over to a little bigger of a prey. How often they molt does seem to be dependent on how often they eat. A lot of people will brag and say that their spider is growing bigger, uh, but it's not always something to brag about. But they may be thought to be shortening their lifespans and aging them quicker, so. A lot of molting has to do with the temperature as well, so if you're worried that your spider is not mol molting, uh, maybe try raising the temperature because that tends to stimulate it for them. 
Uh, also, humidity is really well um, in helping them molt once they're in the molting process. Some spiders may have difficulty molting as some have lost their limbs or have even lost their lives in the middle of a molt. Uh, there's nothing you can really do about it without hurting them more rather than uh, I suggest just um, misting their enclosure lots and like I said, maybe raising the temperature. If you notice that they did lose a limb in the molting process, there's nothing really to worry about. Uh, they can still hunt without a limb just fine and if it's not their last molt, the, the last one they just had, uh, they can grow it back in the next one. Uh, generally, the humidity should usually be at 50%. Hi, Yu Yu! <laughs> You guys see my cat? He's my cat. He's my kitty. Oh, I love her so much. <laughs> She's my soulmate. Mm. I love you. Okay, you go do your shit. She just wants to chat. Now she's not gonna stop talking. <laughs> but yeah, it should generally be at about 50% humidity and then when it's in molt, uh, go um, miss the enclosure a bit more so it's at about 57 to 60 percent. If you see a bit of skin stuck on the spider that they can't really get off, uh, the most you can do is probably just get a q-tip with some water on it and just kind of dampen it a little bit. Don't try to rub it off but just kind of soften the area and then let them do its thing. So, <laughs> uh, Handling jumping spiders. Uh, generally every single time you handle a spider uh, you should be prepared that they they are unpredictable. They could just jump at any time, even if they like you or not. Um, especially the first few times, you gotta be very careful. Uh, they have to get used to you after a while. Uh, I know in my past I've used, or I've heard, that you can use paint brushes to coax them onto there. They're very gentle so it wouldn't hurt them. Don't just try to grab him. Just kind of, um, get them to jump onto your hand. You can even use something else to make them jump onto you. Um, but like at the first few days that you get them, just kind of let them have their own space to themselves. <laughs> Making a bond with these guys takes time. Uh, so I've heard. <laughs> um, so one of the things you can do is you can try hand feeding them. It may sound a little gross. If it is a little too gross, uh, you can use tweezers. Uh, just kind of get them used to you. They they see you as the person that brings them food. Um, they are very vigilant. They kind of look you straight in the eye. Before you think about handling them, always think about what is on your hands. Um, you don't want soap on your hands. You don't want lotions. You don't want essential oils. No chemicals. Um, any of that stuff. So yeah, just be very careful about what you're putting on your hands and always think about that because it may not harm us, but it, it will harm them. Also, if you're a smoker, I don't know if anyone's ever talked about this, but uh, that is also a chemical. So even if you do wash your hands, uh, just be wary. If you're a smoker and you're thinking about getting a spider or any type of creature like that, uh, they are very uh, sensitive to those types of things, even on clothes, if they were to touch your clothes. I know those um, smoking smells linger. I used to be a smoker myself, so just always be aware of that as well. way to tell if your spider is getting comfortable with you is if you're cleaning out its enclosure or taking the dead prey out and it kind of jumps on your hand. <laughs> <laughs> and also make sure you don't handle them after molting, like I said, but also don't handle them before pre-molt as well. It's good to have your spider in a non-cluttered space, so when you do handle it every single time, uh, it will not get lost in that area. Uh, another thing is children. I would not um, trust a child with a spider. Uh, even if they say they like spiders, um, they could get freaked out, they could get spooked, they could injure your spider, they could drop it, they could lose it, so uh, just don't let that happen. Just you gotta put down the, the ground rules. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna be going over lost spiders. Um, I lost my spider, my first jumping spider, a while back. It was a little after Christmas. Um, if I would have known these tips, I might have been able to find her uh, back then, but um, 
she was in such a big area, like in the house, it wasn't just one room, so she could have been almost anywhere. But uh, I want to share you guys, share with you guys some tips that could help you find your jumping spider because honestly, it's not as um, bad as you think. It's not a needle in a haystack. So the first thing you want to do is you want to look up high because that is generally where they tend to make their nests. Um, so it could be an easy way to find it. Uh, looking for light or sunbeams, they like to bask in the heat. You can check doors, window frames, uh, televisions, computers, anything that would be in the same room as them. You could even turn all the lights off and get a flashlight and shine it around and look for a little speck on the wall. Uh, you could leave food out in a little dish with the lid off. Um, you could get a q-tip with some honey or some orange juice on the tip of it and see if they come to eat that because they might be really hungry. And obviously look behind things because they tend to like to be between those little nooks and crannies. But generally what I read in this book is more often than not, surprisingly, they do show up. So that's uh... <laughs> That's quite hopeful to think about. There is a chapter in this book that goes over all the medical conditions that your spider could have. I'm not gonna go over all of them, but if your spider is acting different in any type of way, just Google it immediately. Um, but I'm gonna name some off anyway and just leave them in the description in case you wanna know. A heat stroke, egg binding, drowning, passive recessive disorder, dehydration, blocked spinals, parasite slash mites, food stuck in fangs, dyskinetic, I don't know how to pronounce that, syndrome, and D which also uh, stands for DKS. Okay, so that's all of them right there. There could be more, I'm not really sure, but those are the main ones. If your spider is suffering, there is euthanization. Uh, a lot of people do this just by putting their spider in the fridge uh, just to end their suffering. Um, but like I said, you should probably look up the symptoms. It could be in a molt. Just make sure your spider is um, gonna be okay or if it's not gonna be okay. <laughs> and even after you do all that, there are a lot of stories out there of people losing their spiders little under a year and there was nothing they could do about it. Uh, this is kind of like a dark subject. I don't really like talking about this at the end, but. Uh, uh, generally, when a spider is about to die, they will do a death curl. Um, but there has been cases of juveniles doing this when they are very cold or if they get wet. So just make sure that their environment is good and safe for them. If you assume that they are probably wet or cold, obviously if they're cold, um, raise the temperature. If they are wet, they are probably trying to dry off. So put them on a dry paper towel or in a dry environment with a Q-tip next to them maybe uh, with some water on it or watered down orange juice or honey on the Q-tip. So yeah, just generally just check your environmental levels. Like I said before, they could be molting. Uh, adults, as they get older, they tend to do this more outside their nest because they get too tired to go to their nest, so it could just be that. <laughs> this happens a lot more often once they get older. Uh, adults tend to not molt in their nests as much because they can't produce as much webs, so they molt out in the open. So there's also a chapter on breeding jumping spiders, but I'm not going to get that into it. Um, I'm really mostly here to warn you to just not do it. I'm just gonna give you the rundown of what is gonna happen if you do do that stuff. Uh, but yeah, here we go. Jumping spider breeding should not be taken lightly. Uh, when a female jumping spider gives birth, she gives birth to about 300 plus babies. So <laughs> what will you do with all those babies? Um, if it's on accident or not, uh, if it's only, if it is native to the land, the spider that you had, it is okay to release them into the wild, um, they will survive, but if they are not native to the land, there will be a high chance that they will probably die. And they would also be invasive to the land and would cause effects on the environment. So that's wouldn't be an option if you didn't have one that was um, wild caught or if it was native to your land. So what would you do with 300 plus spiders? Uh, well, with the ones that did survive, you would have to find homes for them. But would you be able to find homes for them? Um, 
coming from a person that's trying to sell things on purpose, it is very hard. <laughs> so you gotta be able to have the resources and um, you would have to have the followers, you would have to have a page, you'd have to have people that would support you on that. I would say don't get into the thought of breeding jumping spiders until you've raised um, quite a few for uh, a few many years, I would say. Uh, for people that have jumping spiders that um, accidentally or they didn't know they were pregnant, um, there is an option to safely uh, take the female away from the eggs herself and dispose of them, destroy the eggs. This is something I don't think I'd ever have the heart to do um, just because I've grown <laughs> such an attachment to these spiders myself that I could never do it. Um, but that is an option to do that. I'm not gonna get into it. Even if the pregnancy was an accident, uh, that happens to some people. I would recommend, uh, you can go on Facebook groups, um, find some spider lovers. I'm sure a lot of people will be there to help you out and someone may be able to take them off your hands that is able to care for them themselves. But yeah, keep in mind that uh, if you were to mate a, a female and a male, uh, the female could actually still have sperm inside of her or she could feel threatened by him and she could end up killing the male and you would have no idea that she was already pregnant in the first place. Especially if the female was wild caught and both the male and female would have to be fully grown adults for it to happen. Let alone they can't be together for too long, they can't share the same food and yada yada yada. <laughs> like I said before, I'd recommend getting this book because it goes over everything and when you go online, you get opinions from everywhere, so it, it's really helpful if anyone wants to know more. As your spider ages, you will notice they will eat less and they will produce less silk and they won't be able to climb as much anymore or can't really climb on the sides of like the enclosure anymore. Once they get to that age, you can start hand feeding them if you haven't already. Um, you can even hand feed them water uh, on a q-tip or orange juice on a q-tip that's watered down or honey that's watered down on a q-tip. Um, you could kill the prey for them, you could leave it at their den for them, or you could go back, like I said in the beginning, and start giving them fruit flies and putting a few fruit flies in their enclosure a day since that doesn't take that much hunting skill. For climbing, you will notice that most jumping spiders, they like to spend their time at the top of the enclosures, but once they get to that age, they will most likely be at the bottom. Uh, you can encourage them to climb and help them out by putting on some like cross stitch on the sides of the enclosure for them to grab on. Uh, I'm not really sure what they mean by that, but just something for them to grab on. Lots of sticks. Um, maybe not even... No, I would probably take the sticks out even because uh, there could be that um, idea that they're very fragile, obviously, and uh, they could fall and potentially really hurt themselves at that point. But yeah, that's pretty much it. There's a few more facts that I want to go over though that I kind of missed. Uh, don't use a heating pad at the bottom of the enclosure um, or on any kind of plastic enclosure. It will emit fumes and could kill, probably will kill your spider. Um, so don't use any like type of heat on like any plastic type of thing to help uh, heat them up. Also, they tend to like to bask at the top of their enclosure rather than the bottom, so that's what they tend to like to do. Uh, a lot of people do this as well, it's kind of under debate, but with my enclosure, I do substrate at the bottom. Um, it just kind of mimics their natural habitat, in my opinion, um, but a lot of people don't take it out because having no substrate in there can help uh, keep away mold and also it keeps prey from not digging underneath the ground and coming up and let's say a mealworm turns into a beetle or so. So it just kind of keeps the enclosure much more clean. I don't know, you guys can tell me in the comments what you think about that whole thing too as well. Another way to keep your enclosure clean is you can add isopods or springtails. Uh, these guys do the cleanup around your enclosure. 
Uh, your spider will not eat them, but you will have to replace them. So take them out and add new ones after a while. Another thing that's very important, I don't know why I'm leaving all this stuff to the end. Before you um, add anything to your enclosure, I don't know if I mentioned this before, I'll have to write it in. But uh, if you want to decorate an enclosure, that's fine. Just make sure the things you're putting in there has no toxins. A lot of the times it's better to go with things that are actually meant for animals. Um, something that won't be sharp, things that don't, don't have chemicals or paints. But yeah, that's pretty much the end of the video. All I gotta really say to keep in check with it is uh, just make sure your enclosure is clean. Uh, mist it often, check the humidity, check for parasites, check for mold, check that uh, there's no bugs roaming around in there. It's not rocket science. I'm just putting out all the stuff out there. I'm just making sure you guys are making the right choice. It's a responsibility. There's so much research to go into every animal whenever you get one. And these guys are so small and I always, from now on, I always wanna do so much more research um, and I wanna move my way up into other things in the future. But for right now, I'm dealing with these little guys and I love them. <laughs> but yeah, that's it everybody. Uh, Cabbage Patchy tuning out again. I never know how to end these. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was a Team Rocket phrase. <laughs> phrase. I cannot speak. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, subscribe. Hit that bell notification. I don't think I asked for that yet. Hit it a like. <laughs> Hit it a like. Give it a thumbs up. And tune in for more. Uh, leave And leave a comment down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.